Welcome to episode 20 of URI Just Getting Started. We are focused on learning more on one of Rhodey's latest and greatest recruits, Mr. Anthony Harris. He's a four-star top 7,100 recruit, and uh, he's uh, a transfer from UNC Tar Heels. Uh, that's big. He may be the first transfer that we've had. And basically what we're doing today is doing a scouting report on Anthony Harris. Uh, the fans are craving for any kind of information. It, this is just a, a big deal, having a recruit of this stature, his ranking and where he came from. And this is a good time. I'm joined tonight by Houston Wilson. Uh, Houston is a scout and recruiting analyst for Prep Hoops, who has watched Harris's career very closely. First, uh, Houston, welcome to the show. Thanks. I appreciate you having me on. I'm going to give you a little backstory on how I found out about Houston. I was looking at the top tweets, and uh, this one popped up. So you see Houston's here. And right there, uh, you want to talk a little bit about how you uh, know Anthony Harris or how long you've been yeah. where? Uh, but Yeah, so I first saw Anthony Harris when he was a – Freshman in freshman high school at Paul the Sixth in Fairfax, Virginia. Um, now that school is actually in uh, a little it, a little farther from DC um, in Virginia, but still Virginia school. Um, and he was a guy that all of the Washington Catholic League schools wanted. Um, he was a up here at the the best league and arguably. The best league in high school basketball is called the WCAC, which stands for Washington Catholic Athletic Conference. The, these schools, these schools in this conference, treat their basketball programs like like a college program. They, it's it like I said, it's arguably the best um, high school basketball conference in the country. So every all of these schools, it has the likes of Dematha, Gonzaga, St. John's, Paul the Six, Bishop O'Connell. Um, and all all those schools wanted wanted Anthony coming out of middle school. You know these these coaches start recruiting these kids in seventh and eighth grade. Wow. So yeah, Anthony Harris. He obviously he chose Paul the Six, um, and he like I said, I saw, I saw him one of his first games at Paul the Six, his freshman year of high school, alongside Jeremy Roach, who was the starting point guard all four years at Paul the Six, and Jeremy Roach obviously is uh, at Duke now. Uh, will be be his third year this upcoming year, and from day one, man, when he was healthy, Anthony Harris was an impact both offensively and de defensively for Paul the Six. Uh, he's a six three combo guard that can defend multiple positions. He loves to get out and transition. He can create his offense from his defense, and he did that all the time uh, for Paul the Six when he was healthy. Health has been a big, big question, you know, kind of a big question mark. He had to sit out his entire senior year because of a torn ACL um, at Paul the Six, but it, he just comes from a winning, a winning background. Paul the Six is a top 25 high school basketball team in the country year in, year out. He, his summer going to his senior year, he won Peach Jam with Team Takeover. Uh, team Takeover is always in discussions as being the top AU team in the country. They play on the EYBL circuit. Um, and he, he, like I said, he just, he comes from winning background. Um, the, the biggest thing right now is his health. And it, it will, hopefully, you know, this can be a really a, a fresh start for Anthony. Um, at, coming out of high school, he was committed to Buzz Williams and Virginia Tech, but then Buzz Williams left, um, Virginia Tech for Texas A&M. So he decommitted. And I think his final three coming out of after he decommitted from Tech was Virginia Tech, the new staff there. They tried to keep him. Um, Indiana and North Carolina eventually chose North Carolina. Tore his ACL his freshman year there, his other one. So sat out, sat out his freshman year. Sophomore year, he got some limited playing time, showed some sparks. And, you know, this year, his junior year at UNC, he, he, he was getting some good minutes, starting some games, made an impact, but had to sit out the rest of the season uh, due to grades. So 
Okay. Then North Carolina has a good recruiting class coming in. They obviously, they have a lot of returners from their national championship team. Uh, so he, you know, he felt like he needed a fresh start and it, the, the situation he's walking into at Rhode Island should definitely, uh, and it sounds like, you know, Rhode Island fans are excited. Then there's a reason for them to be excited. Wow. Uh, before I had you on the show, I thought you knew a lot about him, but I didn't know to this extent you're, you're starting out in seventh grade. So I'm so, yeah, well, I'm, I'm sorry if I kind of threw a lot of info at you, but it, that's it, what we want. As, <laughs> yeah. And as, and as you, there's a lot to talk about him because he's been through a lot, obviously with what I, everything I just said. So, you know, there's a lot of Intel that goes around him. Okay. Well, let's go to the uh, PowerPoint that I have here. Okay. So I put together a slide. This is just um, his expression here. What I see from it, what I see is a guy that's not only intense, but highly confident. And uh, yeah. am I correct at that? I mean, every expression looks like he's just very much so we could get on the court. Right. And you'll see that that's the way he plays. You know, he's excited. He's locked in. He brings energy on both sides of the ball, every single possession. Um, you know, this, this picture, I think what I kind of just talked about, you know, this is going to be a new beginning for him Yeah, being committed to two ACC schools. Obviously he never ended up playing at Virginia tech, but and going to UNC and that didn't really work out the way he wanted to, but in, in, in that initial tweet that you pulled up, like he, he, he's If he can stay healthy, I mean, he can be a first team, all a 10 um, caliber player and, I think this, you know, this expression shows like how excited he is to kind of get that fresh start. Um, and it's a fresh start for Rhode Island too, obviously with uh, Archie coming in, his new staff. And so there, there's a lot to be excited about. Now there is one problem with this image and you may not know this. You're not from uh, New England. Apparently the background is our arch enemy. It's, it's downtown Providence. These guys at Keeney Blue. <laughs> Like that there. So that's the only problem I have. His his uh, demeanor and the way he looks ready to go, but the background has to go. Anyway, that's another story for another day. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Is he called Ant Man or am I uh, mistaken? I've never heard I've never heard him be called that. Um I'll tell Anthony Edwards, who went to Georgia and is now in the Timberwolves, people have called him Ant Man. Yeah. Um no, I, I've just heard Ant. Yeah. Okay. Ant's definitely unique. And you call him a combo guard. I watched a little film on him, uh, the Kentucky game. Can he really play the point? Because we've had a lot of combo guards, and then it didn't work out where they could play the point. And not too. Um. Yes. Yes. He played both. He played the point and shooting guard at, at Paul the Six, and. I, I I think he'll be he'll be used at uh, at Rhode Island as a combo guard. Um, I, I like him kind of more as the two. You know, playing in high school where I saw him a lot with was Jeremy Roach, who's a point guard. But mm -hmm. I've seen him play. I've seen him play on and off the ball. Um, so yeah, I, to answer your question, definitely a combo guard. Yeah. Oh, well, you'll see in another slide going forward Archie Miller's uh, opinion of where where he wants him to. be. And, you know, this is some of the scouting reports, but like you said, he has three ACL injuries in his um, career, one in high school, and then he had two in college. And um, that, that's something that's concerning, but you're a scout. You've seen lots of players. Have you seen players who've had injuries in the past? They're young and athletic and, and just get back uh, and, and, have a career without any more injuries like that. Or Certainly. Um, and, you know, when you hear about ACL injuries, um, I think you kind of hear more about the pros coming out of it. Um, so like you said, you know, Anthony Harris, when this happened to him, he was young, but just for an example, Jeremy Roach, I, I don't know. Jeremy Roach tore his ACL his senior year. So, and J Jeremy and Anthony Harris went to the same high school in the same year. So they were both, they were both out their senior season and Trevor Keels 
who uh, just announced he's declaring for the NBA draft, who this came off a great season at Duke, his first freshman year, he went to Paul the six as well. So they had all these, they had all three of these guys. And so Trevor, Trevor was the leader of that Paul, the six team when Ant and Jeremy were both out. Um, but going back, so going back to young players, Jeremy Roach is a perfect example of a guy that has torn his ACL and come back from an injury. And, you know, he became huge for Duke, obviously, uh, late down the stretch this year for uh, leading them to a final four. Um, And he's coming back next year and, you know, he's going to be the guy leading the point guard position for Duke. So to answer your question, uh, he's a perfect example of someone that is young that can come back. And I I was actually talking to Trevor over the weekend, uh, who's obviously still close with Anthony Harris and, Anthony Harris, mentally, he's he's in a good spot. Just the, if he can stay healthy, he's going to be that top seventy-five to hundred recruit that we saw coming out of high school. That's great. Um, also, we have a great strength and conditioning team out here, and I think they'll be laser focused on this particular injuries. Not that UNC doesn't have any facilities, right. but um, they're they're pretty smart the way they work. I'm I'm very impressed what I've seen Archie Miller put together. Um, and then we're talking about Archie Miller here. And just to digress a little bit, one of the reasons besides his injuries is look at the people he had to play behind on the team. Yep. Cole Anthony and Caleb and RJ. Uh, it looks like he's yeah. pretty tight with Cole. But, uh, this was the quote I was talking about. He's, Archie said, we are anxious to create a new role for him. It's more of a primary ball handler. And I found that to uh, be possibly surprising, but it made me feel like he definitely uh, has the ability to play. The one. Yeah. So he, he, when the ball's in his hands, he, he's going to be aggressive. Uh, he's going to, he's going to attack the, the lane hard, try, you know, try to finish at the rim. What, he he plays through contact well. He knows how to get to the free throw line when he's attacking. So I I can obviously see why Archie's saying that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when the ball's in the hands, in his in Ant's hands, he's going to want to push it up the floor because of his ability to get out and transition and you know get to the rim uh, from that way. Like I, I I'm just picturing myself uh, watching him in the past so many so many times where he's just he gets the ball. Um, defensive rebounds, someone, someone passes, and he he explodes up the court. Um, so, I, you know, it or it he kind of play. It's kind of has that bully ball when he's attacking the rim. So I can definitely see that why that's so intriguing for Archie. You seem uh, excited about him, uh, and he's going to Rhode Island. And you're not a you're probably not a Rhode Island guy, but just I'm just hearing your excitement in your voice about him. You are you, you must be vested in his uh, game. Very much so. I mean, it, it, there were times where he was labeled, and he could still get that way, but, I mean, as a future NBA player coming out of high school. Uh, not, like, right away, but if he continued to progress the way he has. But those injuries just obviously slowed that down. And, you know, he, he reunites with a guy named Kenny Johnson, who Archie, um, who Archie just hired to his staff, and Kenny – has been an assistant at Paul the Six, where Aunt Anthony went to high school, and um, Kenny has play, has coached for Team Takeover, obviously where Aunt played AU. So, um, you know that's that's exciting for Aunt. He know he gets to be under someone that he knows extremely well, has known him all of his life pretty much since he's been in the basketball world. So, just that fresh new start, like there's a lot to look forward to. I, I so like- that's why I'm excited. Yeah. Oh, I like that ant nickname. And I think it's going to be picked up after this podcast quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we're talking, we weren't talking about his high school coach, but this quote I just had to put up there is he goes so hard. If you ever watch him play, he's going out there every play like his hair is on fire. You know, (laughs) I I think they run out of quotes at times, but this, this guy came up with something else. It does look like he's so intense uh, out there and I understand exactly what he's saying. Yeah. Um, well, Glenn, first of all, Glenn Farello, I'm, he's someone I'm close with. Uh, 
the, the amount of talent that he has coached at that Paul the six is unbelievable. And it, that quotes everything is his completely true. He goes out and gives it his all on every single possession. And, you know, he's built well. And he was one of the stronger guys um, when he was in high school playing the WCAC. And that just showed, you know, how, how bad he wants it, his commitment. And he's going to do whatever it takes uh, f- to to win. And he's been successful doing that. Like talk about, and as I talked about all his accolades uh, coming out of high school, um, he, he's just an ultimate winner. And that's going to, like I said, that that number one thing is health. And if he can, that's going to just lead to more wins for Rhode Island. And he's, his build is pretty impressive as well. Mm-hmm. 100%. Uh, he, yep. he reminds me of a Rhode Island great Jared Terrell, who was playing with Hurley and we two rounds at NCAA with him, and he's pretty intense too. This is his career, and maybe you could take me through what went on each year. You alluded to his final season. He started off the gate, and then he, he stopped playing in the second half of the season. Yeah, but, yeah so obviously, yeah. you know, he got – yeah, it was only five games his freshman year, so, you know, it was early on. Picked up a little more um, last year. And then, um, I'm tr- obviously last year, it, injuries and stuff. It just he wasn't a hundred percent. But this year, you know, fourteen games going into before his he couldn't play anymore because academics. Um, but I mean, he was getting he was given 11, 11 minutes per game, and obviously we've talked about the amount of talent that UNC had this year, you know, it, it might've not shown his production in the stat book um, on only averaging 2.6 points and 11 and 14 games, but I mean, he was playing and he, he was set. He was on pace to contribute a lot before the academic issues. But, um, you know, it, he, he got, he definitely got those, got the academics fixed because I don't I know if you ask you that. Yeah. Um, at first he wasn't allowed to travel with the team or really be with the team, but in the latter part of the um, season, you know, he, you saw him on the bench. He was at the final four um, Mm -hmm. cheering his guys on. So that was good to see. Yeah. And uh, what I noticed also, he rose to the occasion. So the big games, he had a really good ACC tournament. One of those seasons He had a great game against UCLA and a bunch of others. So uh, that says a lot about a, a player that arises to the occasion and is ready. For right. It. He's a big game player, maybe. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, if you look there, his freshman year, that's coming off his first ACL injury. Mm-hmm. He, I mean, he was back to normal. I mean, 6.8 points per game in five games as a freshman, getting 12 minutes per game as a freshman. Like, I mean, <laughs> there's nothing to pout your head, shy your head away from that. Um and sure. that's probably ever since that injury, that's probably the mentally the best he, I feel like his head's have kind of been in the most healthiest he's been. Um, and then obviously the next two seasons happened, but you know, we're back. I think now we're back to that point, that new beginning, new fresh start for him where he, I think we'll, we'll see some similar numbers um, to how he's kind of started his freshman year right away for Red Island. And uh, he's going to be a sophomore, if I'm correct. So he picked up maybe one season because he only had five games, red shirt. Yeah, uh, and then I was – Math on that. Can you explain that to me? Well, you know, as I was sitting here talking about that, um, where as we were talking, I was wondering how much eligibility he has less because obviously the freshman year he only played five games. Then COVID happened, so he definitely got a COVID year. So, right, and I'm looking at the Rhode Island roster right now. It says he's a redshirt sophomore. Yes. That's so, yes. yeah, so he has this year, next year, the year after that. Mm-hmm. So, three years maybe, three or four? That's what's been said. Yeah. And if it's not that correct, let's keep it down so no one uh, <laughs> picks up on that. But I'm right. expecting a sophomore. I just was doing the math and doing the research and was just wondering uh, – He's had different injuries and in seasons. Yeah. So. yeah. I mean, you know, like I've alluded to, it, there's, there's been a lot 
uh, going on with him. So if it's a red, red shirt sophomore, then yeah, at least three more years. Yeah. We're ex- and th- that'd be great. Uh, his North Carolina career, you know, that's what I alluded to the games that he had. He showed up really well, 14 against UCLA. And then and that UCLA game. I remember watching that. I'm pretty sure that was the CBS sports, like, Oh yeah. Uh, whatever they call it, classic or something, where it's UCLA, UNC, I think Kentucky and Ohio State are the four teams. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but that was kind of his going out party, I think, um, in that game. Wow. And uh, another point I would alluded to as well is how he, well he did in four postseason games. I, I see a pattern, and uh, he's a big time player. And this For sure. Atlantic 10 is nothing to sneeze at, but he's playing against some uh, ACC tournament, UCLA. Uh, yeah. I mean, the A-10, you know, they've been, cons- in basketball-wise, they've been considered that next, you know, Power 5, close thing to Power 5 conference. With the coaches um, that came in here, I think they've upped it. Uh, upped yeah. It more. Um, so I'm, I'm not saying uh, P5, but I'm, I'm right. they they have to be better than they are with the coaches that they brought in and the talent transfers that they're getting, including Rhode Island, Massachusetts. I I think it could be a two to three year or two, three bid um, conference next year. Yeah. Uh, Maybe more. Who knows? Yeah, exactly. He's lined up, but but that's pretty good if we could get three in there. And uh, a lot of this, you already mentioned uh, his prep career and that, starting in seventh grade and just uh, moving into uh, the, the team as freshman year. And, and it's such a, mm-hmm. I didn't realize they were a top 25 team. So um, that, that, um, if, can you, if you go back real quick, sure. That takeover team that won EYBL peach jam, absolutely loaded. He played with, so it was him. Um, Jeremy Roach. Armando Baycott, Hunter Dickinson, Casey Morsell, Justin Moore. I and mean, these are all Division I college players now. You know, some people are saying it was one of the best AAU teams ever. Wow. Yeah. Well, and that cool. just yeah. – You know, I'm sorry. Please continue. That just alludes to, you know, the winning background that I've talked about him being in. Like, hey, this guy, he's just used to winning. Now – For sure. I'd like to run a little videotape and ask you some questions. I have here. So uh, there's a lot of great highlights on this. So that's, yeah, this is what I'm talking about. His ability to get down and transition with the ball. I mean, he immediately does something productive there. Does he have a perimeter game as well? So obviously I haven't really seen it since um, kind of the injuries and whatnot, but in height – before he got injured, his senior season, it, the shot was co- becoming a lot more consistent. Mm-hmm. He was being relied to hit perimeter jumpers like this. Um, he's not. He's known to kind of you know be aggressive and get to the rim like you're seeing right there. But the shot definitely became more consistent. And I, he'll be asked to make shots at Rhode Island, and I think he'll be a you know a good factor for that. Yeah. And uh, how about we're talking about his playmaking skills? Uh, his mm-hmm. handling and passing, he penetrates quite a bit. Will he be able to uh, toss it out to the wings for some open shots? That's 100%. Amazing. He has a high IQ. You know, he's, he's played with, he's played with high level players. So he knows how to get them in, involved. So you, yes, you, like you said, he, he's a playmaker. He's shown playmaking skills. Um, gosh, I, how was that that game? Uh, these old, old films, man. This is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, no. I, I, I nice expect time. him expect him to get his teammates involved for sure. I know you can't help but admire some of the shots you're probably sitting in the stands there. Well, yeah. Another question is, um, uh, can we expect him to start immediately? Uh, that's what a few fans wanted to know. And I know so, you the team as well as you do other teams, but we, we have some good talent in there. But we, but he is his talent levels, you know, very high as well. Yeah. So I, I, I don't really know. I'm, I'm looking at the roster. He certainly can start. Um, it, you know, it looks like 
y'all were going to, you know, you're, would, you're obviously probably going to expect Ishmael Leggett to start. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, Jalen Carey, uh, h- h- how did he finish this past year? He had a a good second season, so uh, mm-hmm. he did. He's improved a lot after his first season and worked on his game, and we're expecting a lot from him. Yeah, I mean, I th- I think there, there's a strong possibility. I wanted to get a little bit about your background and tell me how you got started and what you do. And uh, we've talked a lot. I've gotten a lot of information based on. Oh. This, this is a pleasant surprise, and I know <laughs> the fans are going to just eat it all up. Um, I want, like I said, I appreciate you um, bringing me on. I love to talk about the game as much as possible with different people. Um, yes, yeah, so I got started. I played basketball in high school up until my sophomore year of high school. Um, I went to Norfolk Collegiate School, <clears throat> and – that, that was they were a big basketball powerhouse at the time um so i just wasn't good enough to play but just because they got you know they were one of the top teams in the state but i really wanted to stay involved with the game because i loved it so much so i became manager of our team mm-hmm. um in high school did a lot of film um stuff stats analytics and all of that um grad went to hampton city college it's a d3 school in farmville virginia and my junior year of college, um, you know, I, I've been following the game all during college, knew the Hampton City staff really well. Um, my junior year of college, I went to my first EYBL tournament, um, a, a company that's not around anymore uh, called MakePlays.com, hired me as a recruiting and scout analyst for them um, and did that up until I graduated college in 2016. Um, 2016, I moved up to DC and st- got hired by a company called Prep Hoops, mm-hmm. where I'm obviously employed with now. Um, I knew I wanted to get to DC because, you know, in my opinion, and a lot of people's opinion, this is the ultimate hotbed for high school basketball. So I knew if I wanted to kind of get full time into basketball, I needed to be up here. And now it's 2022, and I run a NCAA scouting service, which is a service where college coaches are able to subscribe to learn more about high school recruits. Um, I'm a event director for Prep Hoops. Um, I write articles and contribute for Prep Hoops, contribute to their rankings. And then I cover some Pittsburgh uh, recruit basketball recruiting and Virginia basketball recruiting for their rival.com affiliate websites. So I got my hand a little in everything. Um, you have a bright career, and you're already uh, involved in some. Yeah, design. So, coaches are relying. Um, I just, yeah, um, you know, my favorite thing to do is just help coaches out, talk to college coaches. You know, I'm talking to them daily, just about certain players that I've seen from across the country. Um, I've <laughs> this this past year was a busy year on the road, and that's kind of how I expect it to be, kind of just the the rest of my career doing this because. You know, in order to be successful in this job, you, you have to be in the gym. Um, you know, you can't, and yeah. that's just kind of where I live in the gym. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, we're going to keep an eye on you, and uh, you have a very good career. I, I do have a few more questions, with a little more time. <laughs> uh, this is from Keeney Blue, the uh, preeminent forum in Rhode Island, some of the most knowledgeable basketball fans, not just here, but in the country. And uh, that's a big thing to say, but I've been on this uh, forum for about 10 years. But what NBA player do you compare him to if, if it's possible? Oh, gosh. That's a hard one, huh? I, I, I really don't like player comparisons. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, Uh, a Vince, I mean, a Vince Carter type. He's not as big as Vince Carter, obviously, but like Vince Carter, the high flying athlete and, um, you know, finished above the rim. Well, obviously I don't, I don't think Ant's going to unfortunately have the a story career like him, but Vince, Vince could really get the ball up and transition, obviously finish above the rim, had those playmaking skills. And I, I, I see that from Anthony. Um, Say that again. Sounds like a closer. 
Yeah. Were you surprised he picked URI? Not at all. Not at all. I think after he saw what happened at UNC, um, he knew he uh, – playing that level was just kind of written off the wall for him. Yeah. Um, when Archie Miller hired Kenny Johnson, who knows Ant extremely well, um, it kind of seems like a no-brainer. Um, it came down to UCF from Rhode Island, but uh, Brayon Freeman, who just announced his com- – who announced his commitment to um, Rhode Island and Ishmael lately. Like, they, they've had success in the DMV. So, it, yeah, no-brainer at all. Um, once I knew he was visiting, I was like, uh, I don't know who's going to be able to beat Rhode Island out to get him. Uh, I wish we spoke to you beforehand. We would have loved <laughs> to hear that. We, we had to wait with bated breath. Well, Houston, uh, thanks so much for coming on, and good luck with continuing your career. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, and, you oh. know, I, real quick, I I don't know if – um. You know, I can I can see don't I don't think he's gonna be Vince Carter, but that's just kind of something that comes to mind. Yeah. Uh one other point now that I just uh thought about you uh definitely uh rose to the occasion. You gave us much more than I was anticipating. I, I thought maybe you'd have some stats, but you know this guy's game and uh through and through. Awesome. Well I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, well great and uh Stay in touch and keep on going. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Well, we're going to continue your eye just getting started with some videotape of uh, Anthony Harris. So stay on. And of course, we always end this. Go roadie. Thank you.